In part A of this lecture, we'll talk about membranes and transport. The two major questions are what are the structures and lipid compositions of cell membranes in bacteria, archaea, and eukarya? You should recall that bacteria and archaea are prokaryotes. meaning they have no real nucleus, and eukaryotes, of course, have nuclei. One important question is how changes in membrane components affect membrane properties and function. We'll talk about that. And of course, transport is one of the most important functions of cell membranes, and we'll talk about that in more detail. Biologists look at the cell membrane as a fluid mosaic. So uh, this is called a fluid mosaic model. And a model is a conceptualization based on the data. The fluid mosaic model has two parts. The mosaic part comes from the fact that the cell membrane consists of a mosaic of lipids. So the lipids form a bilayer, and we'll talk about that in more detail in just a minute. And within the bilayer, we have a number of different components, of which the most important are proteins. And you see that some proteins go all the way through the lipid bilayer from one side to the other. And these are called integral membrane proteins. And these domains, the part of the protein that's embedded in the membrane is an integral membrane domain. And if the part of the protein goes from one side all the way across to the other, then that is a transmembrane domain. In addition to proteins embedded in the lipid bilayer, we find a number of uh, carbohydrates. These are essentially oligosaccharides. And they may be covalently linked to lipids themselves. Or proteins have also, also have oligosaccharides. And proteins containing oligosaccharides are called glycoproteins. So let's take a look at the phospholipid bilayer, or the lipid portion. You've all heard of the phospholipid bilayer, probably. And the name comes from the fact that the basic subunit is a glycerol molecule, which is a three-carbon sugar alcohol, basically. And then to each of the three carbons, we have different chemical groups attached. One of these uh, carbons contains a phosphate, and that's why they're called phospholipids, because they have a phosphate group. And then the other two carbons of glycerol have a hydrocarbon chain. So glycerol plus a phosphate plus two hydrocarbon chains. So the hydrocarbon chains can be fatty acids or other what we call aliphatic chains. Aliphatic means it's a chain of carbons and hydrogens with no oxygens, nitrogens, or any other groups. So the basic phospholipid, because of the phosphate, one portion of the molecule that we'll call the head, is charged and hydrophilic. The other portion of the molecule with these two hydrocarbon chains is extremely hydrophobic, and we call that the hydrophobic tail. And these phospholipids in aqueous solutions spontaneously assemble into either micelles, when they're very small and at low concentrations. At higher concentrations, they can actually form a bilayer where the hydrophobic tails are pointing towards each other, 
the hydrophilic heads are pointing towards water and interact with water. And then there's an inner layer of hydrophilic uh, heads that are again reacting with water in the internal aqueous com compartment. And then on the size of a cell membrane, what we see is the, uh, in effect, a bilayer sheet, which goes all the way around the cell and encloses the contents of the cell.